What's happening? This is George, your friendly neighborhood bullfiddle cat. As you can see behind me, I'm still in Croatia. I am not back to Slapsville yet. And it's a little bit windy here. And you can notice that I'm not at Slapsville because it's always slappy in Slapsville. Um, today I have a special guest. All my guests are special. I, I feel like, like every player uh, brings some kind of uniqueness. And um, today's guest uh, brings something that I was, I was seeking to hear for a long time in jazz music, and I, uh, I couldn't find it, you know. And then I was, we're going to be talking about it as well. But I, I studied jazz for a long time, and I, I don't consider myself a jazz player. I do play jazz quite often, but I don't consider my, uh, I'm not the jazz guy. Um, but I have huge um, admiration for jazz and uh, for jazz musicians. And, but I, I've been always missing that slap uh, style in, in, in jazz. So, so um, today's guest might fix that. You know, so I, I have a feeling he is definitely, he's, he's the youngest guy that I'm, that I'm featuring on this uh, slap stream so far. Um, but, you know, I, that kind of brings me to think that, you know, he definitely might be some one of the guys that might, might change the direction, you know, so that slaps become cool again in jazz. It's kind of feels that it's haven't been cool since, I don't know, 1939 or something. Um, first thing that I wanted to ask you guys, I already see there's quite a few people here. Uh, do you hear me and do you see me fine? I'm not using my regular Slapsville, uh, Slapsville setup, so I just have these uh, headphones. So I want to make sure that you guys hear me. And um, so once somebody tells me that, I will introduce my guest for today. Uh, and I'll use this opportunity to, to remind you to please follow Art of Slap Base. Um, all the links that I, the, my social links and Art of Slay Base links are below, below this video. And you can follow Art of Slay Base on Instagram and Facebook. Art of Slay Base, uh, dot com is the obviously the best source for anything slap related. Um, and I'm kind of still impressed how, how, how much it influences people still. I started that website uh, 10 years ago or so, 11 years ago. And um, um, all right, so it seems coming in loud and clear from Oliver Baroni. This is the best when you get your uh, previous guests following the slap stream and then you know becoming fans of the of the show. And then I get a feeling that the slap stream gonna grow. All right, thank you, Oliver. Thank you. Simon and thank you, Chanda. Yes, we can hear you well. Awesome. And Fernando from Argentina also says that well, that he can hear me fine. So I was assuming that everything is fine. I have to mention that Fernando is responsible why Slapstream looks so slick. He is the guy that did all these slaptastic graphics. So uh, I posted his uh social links as well below this video so make sure to follow him as well and um, if you feel inclined um, you can help me out uh, with donations i posted venmo and paypal links and patreon patreon becoming kind of uh working working fine i feel i feel that's that's um that's that's gonna be a good one uh for us all right so it seems that everything is fine uh without further ado i'm gonna introduce my guest for today uh you might know him as mobera uh but i i will introduce him with his real name for today he's uh william ledbetter let me see he seems ready all right what's up y'all what's up george a did i say yeah. it right exactly all sure. right my man did i say right your name yep you sure did cool awesome how have you been Are you good i'm hanging in there man glad to be here glad to be here i'm really glad you're here we're all hanging in there like in this <laughs> during <laughs> this crazy times tell you me know, our lives it. been like you know tours and music and i'm not sure like you know I'm, 
most of our guests are um, are musicians. I feel like that, but you know, like there are some few normal people as well. So mm -hmm. it's really crazy, just, guys. Just so you know, it's like being without live music for us. It's just like living in a parallel world or something. Man, tell me Hopefully about it. Hopefully, it's not gonna last for a while. How have you been? Uh, <laughs> hanging with this with this whole new situation what are you doing so for the most part i've been just um pretty much making music right here in my room um i was set up to do some recordings uh, i actually started out the pandemic uh, doing some live recordings um for a friend of mine who i play in his band um his name is keenan mckenzie and i play in his band called the riff keenan mckenzie and the riffers and um uh, we did some live recordings and he was getting people all across uh, the u.s uh, that he's played with so you know we were doing some of that stuff and then you know just trying to practice other than that um it's it was a big adjustment shall we say because i was so used to pretty much playing almost every night of the week you know driving all across uh where i live i live in north carolina right now driving all across north carolina and all that stuff so going from that to just you know, being stuck in a house for a long time and not being able to like interact with my bandmates and friends. It was a, <laughs> it was a big adjustment. So uh, I was thankful for, you know, trying to just try to keep playing and make music with as many people as possible. Uh, although it be virtual. So other than that, man, it's, yeah, it's well, this is right. new normal. Hopefully I know it's not be new normal forever. <laughs> Tell me about it. So, yeah. But, you know, it brought like some some cool things, you know, it's, you know, it brought the slap stream, you know. Yeah. All of us are like trying to figure out some creative, you know, way ways to, to use the, you know, our energy and like just like to do something. For so real. Figure out this might be a, you know, a good way like to represent slap bass culture. Yeah, um, man. So what I wanted to do, you haven't been playing uh upright bass for for too long right it's been five yep. years six years or yep somewhere long? between five and six years i think this is going on my sixth year i kind of lost track but uh yeah it's it's kind of low it's in the single digit still <laughs> that, that that's crazy man you're such an amazing player thank so you tell me about a little bit about your uh your background you started on piano or a mm -hmm. guitar and then how did you switch to bass tell me a little bit about that so people can actually know where you are coming from okay so the start all the way at the beginning yes i started on piano when i was three um grew up in a military family so we moved around so the lessons were like off and on and then um when once we kind of settled and where i grew up in in virginia i started picking up other instruments such as a trumpet in middle school uh and also around that same time guitar and that became my main instrument for x amount of years and i still play it a lot now but it wasn't until i moved down here to north carolina and started my college career uh, i actually started at uh, north carolina a t state university and uh, as an engineer major believe it or not and you know had big hopes but i was also enrolled into the jazz band while i was there that was led under Mondre moffitt and uh you know i came in playing guitar you know i wasn't the greatest soloer but i was really good at reading chord changes and had a good feel and um the story on how i got started with bass was uh, that year um which was my freshman year so that was the fall 2014 um we had no drummer and uh we had one of my great friends who's a killing bass player killing multi-instrumentalist uh, his name is byron uh uh byron carter so he, he was playing electric bass at that time and he was like well he also played drums so he filled in on that and I was one of three guitarists in that band. So me and one of my and my best friend Dre, who plays saxophone and that was also in that group, um, we would go in and mess around after class hours, like late while the building was still open, and they had an old K sitting in there. And I was like, I finally get to, you know, kind of mess around on a bass. I've never, you know, been around one per se where I can just kind of experiment like I've done with all the other instruments I play. So I go, you know, keep on playing there. And uh, it got to a point where Dre and I would go in there consistently because Dre would also come and practice piano. And our professor, Moffitt, he came in. He was still there one night. He was doing finishing up some work. And he said, 
you know, if y'all cats keep playing them instruments, I'm going to put you on them instruments. And, you know, we was just like, oh, yeah, you know, you're joking around and all that stuff. And then I'll never forget, I think it was a, it was a Wednesday because the class met Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I came in there <laughs> and he was like, well, congratulations, Will. You're on base today. And I said, what in the world? OK. <laughs> and uh, that's been one of the biggest blessings. I've never I never really looked back. You know, I, I kept playing it. And then as time went on, I was like, yeah, you know what? I really do like playing bass. Um, and I want to continue studying bass. I want to get better because this is something I could see doing. So then after my second year at a and and a couple of major, uh, I changed my major to music and all that stuff, I actually enrolled, I uh, transferred to UNCG so I could study in their, uh, the Miles Davis Jazz Studies program. And um uh, I got in. I was so thankful because it was a lot of last minute stuff because of just a lot of things were going on in my life at that time. And uh, I got accepted there. And then from there, I finished out three years and I'm here now. So and I've been I've been very thankful. I met a lot of great people uh, from being here. But everything worked out perfectly from me starting at a and and then me going to UNCG. So then I I've uh, got a lot of different experiences, and it's actually the reason that I'm on bass versus playing guitar. So, and that all happened within five so years ago. <laughs> That's so amazing. And and you're 25 year old now, or 24? I turned 25 24. later this year. Wow. That's crazy, man. Yeah, but, man. You know, you accomplished a lot. And thank and, you. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction. I'm counting on you, you know, to bring, <laughs> you know, the slap back to jazz. <laughs> yeah, man. Jazz world. It's, it's you know, we're going to be talking about it later on. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how did you develop your style? You know, it's very, I hear, you know, from all these links that you sent me. And I discovered you uh, actually uh, through our mutual friend, Ryan Gould. Who yeah. Sent me, who sent me some of like uh, some of your clips. And he said like, oh, you, you got to check out this guy. Do you know, do you know him? I'm like, no. Thank you, and, Ryan. Um, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, be, I believe that Ryan is here. Uh, he is. He's, he said. Geez, hey, Ryan. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and I was really happy with it, and then it, well, I was really impressed with, with you know with your playing. And well, Thank you. you. Know, I, I gotta you gotta find more, find out more about about this guy. And then you sent me all those links, and mm -hmm. then, and it's. Um, yeah, you definitely deserve the spot here with the same Thank thing. you. Uh, Thank with you. With 24-year-old. Um, I wanted to, like, to mention something like, is anybody else have echo problems? I had like a couple people saying there's uh, some, some, some problem, but most of you said it's fine. Um, so I would assume it's fine. So okay. that if something is wrong, let us, let us know in the comments. Um, so uh, let me back, get back to my question. So I want to know, uh, I would like you to tell me, how did you develop your own style? Do you come, do you come from, I know you come from piano and, and, and guitar and kind of bass accidentally mm -hmm. happen to be your own forte, <laughs> uh, but it's um, like you have a unique style that it's, that it's jazz, but you also use, um, you also use, like you know, uh, some as rudiments as you you called them earlier when we were when we were chatting, mm -hmm. uh, like some slap patterns that are maybe not in jazz, and then um, you kind of created your own thing, you know. Like and then I when I'm listening to your 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 playing, I hear a little bit of Mingus, a little bit of uh, Milt Hinton, a little bit of Willie Dixon, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I want you if you if you don't mind elaborating a little bit on that. Um, and just like tell me how did you develop your style okay so it's the biggest thing is when i was starting you know to learn bass period i was just listening to a lot of people that had what i liked as a big sound um so i was hearing that in a lot of the cats that that you mentioned and i'm like my approach is there's always something that you can learn from something for somebody whether they're better than you or actually even if they're not as as good as you there's always something that you can pick from that. So I was always listening to, you know, different 
um, cats and uh, and and especially when it came to slap stuff, a lot of stuff I do do now is really from Milt Hinton. He's one of the first people I was listening to because I remember I saw an interview. I was on YouTube. I think this this is before I actually went to uh, UNCG. I was watching a video and I just stumbled upon him and he was talking about his slap stuff. Um, and I was like, okay, that kind of started putting something in my head. When I started listening to how he was playing, I was like, okay, that's really cool. I like that. So I was like, let me take some of that and put in my, uh, my arsenal. And then uh, my blues mom, who I think I see her, uh, she's watching this right now, uh, Jackie Scott. I, uh, I played with her and her band back in the day uh, and still now playing guitar. Uh, she sent me some videos, uh, one of them being Willie Dixon, the bassology video. And I was like, oh, my God, this is killing. Like, because uh, I knew Willie Dixon as a great, you know, uh, songwriter and, and also a bass player. But I never really knew uh, all that he did, especially the slap stuff. And I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, Um uh, so I was like, there was a lot of things I heard that he was doing. And I, and I especially since I could watch it because it was a video, I was able to emulate and add some of that stuff into my playing now. Uh, and then we'll actually talk about some of that a little bit later on. And then even going back to because I love a lot of New Orleans style. So I was listening to uh, some cats like Pops Foster and uh, how he's playing. It's a whole different sound. So what I'm getting at is I was listening to different things and hearing different sounds and trying to pick and uh, take different things to add to my arsenal. So whenever I'm on the bandstand, I can pull it out at my will. Uh, Cause I'm playing not only, you know, modern jazz, I play a lot of traditional jazz. I play a lot of swing band. I play in two big bands right now. Well, not right now cause of the pandemic, but uh, I play in two big bands and a lot of small combos. And I've been able to pretty much utilize the slap technique um, in all of those. And the best part is because there's so many different techniques and styles where it's like figuring out, OK, I can take a little bit of this Milt Hinton and play it right here. I can take a little bit of this Willie Dixon, play it right here. I can take some of this Pop Foster, play it right here. And then all the other various cats I've listened to, like I think it was Al Morgan uh, when I was listening to uh, some Fats Waller. So what I'm getting at nonetheless is like, you know, that's how I developed my sound. I just took things that I liked and incorporated into some of the principles that were already that I've already had established from my years of playing music period. That's how things should be. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's, that's great. And, um, and you told me that you discovered that, that art of slab bass helped you out, like finding some information. Yes. Right? Yes. I was, um, I can't remember how I came about, but I know I got in contact with Ryan via um, Instagram. And um, I, I think actually, yes, it was through Ryan. He, um, we somehow we got uh, in contact and we were talking and then he told me about it and I started following the page and I saw a lot of cool stuff up there. It's like, I was learning some history about different cats I've never heard about like Steve Brown. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, learning about him. Al, uh, Al Morgan, uh, and just and even cats that I've half heard about, but just hearing and learning more about them. So checking all that stuff out, it's been really cool because now I'm able to find more resources and uh, and even just get different. Uh, how we say it? Uh, I'm just I'm like people are always posting different. Uh, sorry, I lost the words right there. Uh, just like different videos and stuff of like stuff I've never heard before. So. Uh, thanks to Art of Slap, I've actually been able to listen to a lot more Slap stuff over this pandemic that I didn't know about beforehand. Yeah, Art of Slap Bass has been, you know, kind of, I, I noticed that people, you know, like it. So I'm really happy that, you know, I hear that more and more. And I've been, I was able to work a little bit more on it, like for the last year or so. Well, uh, I appreciate and, that, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, I mean, that's the art art form that should be preserved but it also should be i don't think it was developed like that it, it still hasn't been developed to its max so it's just mm -hmm. a technique that really could you know see you know like something special you know happening in the future i noticed like whenever i play in for classical musicians they freak out like oh that's this is like a bartok pizzicato on speed or something mm -hmm. and then everybody loves it and appreciates it but you know 
uh, modern composers, they can actually appreciate kind of the most because it's kind of, they always look for a new sound. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but like, there's not that many pieces that utilize slap. So, nope. you know, I don't know, like those, those things hopefully going to change. And what I wanted to mention, uh, whoever is not familiar with, um, with uh, Art of Slab Bass and these articles that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. um, I would like to point out especially this one, uh, which is New Orleans String Bass Players. Um, cool. And that one was written by Dan, Dan Mayer, uh, and it was written all the way in uh, 1990 um, in a, in a nice. kind of like in a fanzine, like wavelength, like a magazine that was uh, uh, that, that, that used to be published in uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And it was focused on New Orleans music. And this is the, the this is the, the the article. And it really like like he wrote like lots of. Uh, names that usually you don't see that in jazz uh, history books. You know, your jazz history yeah. books usually don't talk about these guys at all. And I think they are equally important as. I mean, it's 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 not a competition, so it's hard like to say. But um, it, they're really th those guys are really important. Like I mean, especially the ones that you mentioned. Like you know, mm -hmm. I would add I would add Bill Johnson as well. Yeah. Um, so I think that those guys were should be in history books more which brings me to the next question i wanna um i know that slap basically started among uh jazz musicians uh, in new orleans mm -hmm. most likely i mean the origins are not super clear but they're kind of pointing out to new orleans mm -hmm. and um and it was developing very nicely in the 20s we had like so many amazing players and also in uh if i can say like a mainstream world like uh duke kellington and cap calloway they, yep. they you know cap calloway had um yeah milt hinton, I think uh, so. milt hinton yeah uh but before milt hinton it was uh al morgan you know so yeah um so 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 these mainstream bands had uh, uh mainstream jazz bands had always slapped players in the mm -hmm. band and after Jimmy Blanton joined uh, Duke Ellington, kind of disappeared from jazz. Uh, I mean, a couple cats were still using it, but it was it, it, it kind of really disappeared. So I want to hear your opinion about it and your take on it. Like how, like you know, what, 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 what? Why do you think that happened? It's, it's for me. It's kind of like why would. Bo disappeared. Bo is not used in in jazz like uh, um, as a dominant technique, but it's still used like through all these years. You know, had like you know swing players like Slam Sewer that was using, and then uh, Paul Chambers, and then you know like mm -hmm. everybody's using Bo, like especially for soloing, and at least a little bit. But like slap, kind of like it, it was gone. You know, I, 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 I what do you think? What what was the reason for that? So. My uh my speculation on is on it just with the evolution of music, but also just the evolution of how people were playing a bass too, um, because if you notice back in the day, a lot of people played the bass, um, not they they weren't playing as far as a jazz form, they weren't playing pizzicato like where the hand was anchored onto the fingerboard. They were playing off the bass, and then also with everything being really all acoustic at the time. A lot of cats would do a lot more slap stuff because, uh, and this is something I, when I was watching Milt Hinton talk about it, he said it very well. It was like, by the time you finish playing and walking all these courses and stuff, you need something that's going to help you stand out. And um, especially playing a bass, normally the bass is one of the quieter instruments on the bandstand. So that slap technique helped that bass stand out a lot more. So like when I go and teach, a lot of um, like at some like I, I present at elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, whatnot. Uh, I'll I'll explain that to them and I'll show them. I'll, I'll ask them, you know, which one's louder, and I'll you know I'll walk a line and then I'll slap it. And there's like the slap normally is it just stands out so much more. So when you know amplif amplification came around, I know a lot of cats were not using that. And also with the finger, um, as I was saying earlier, with them playing that style it was more prominent just to be practicing that kind of slap because you're almost doing that 
But as they started just anchoring their finger, their right hand on the fingerboard and just kind of playing like that, there became really no need to slap as well as just the style and, and context of the music change versus uh, a lot of like the older styles where they were using a lot of two feel. It almost kind of had like that from what from this is the stuff that I've learned and I've been watching and just observing. It had more like that tuba feel. So uh, like you said, when um, Jimmy Blanton joined uh, Duke Ellison's orchestra, it definitely changed what a lot of um, it changed the way how a lot of bass players um, were approaching the bass because instead of it just being, you know, keeping time all the time, it was, you know, you can do a lot more stuff to it. So they started moving away from the slap, which is kind of sad to say, but I mean, it's just the way the music went. They, I don't know. That's, that's just, that's the stuff that I've observed. Um, you know, they weren't really doing that, that too much anymore. On yeah. a mainstream level. I mean, they, you know, there was still cats doing it, you know, all the way till now. You know, I mean, you know, Milt Hinton, he passed, what, in 2000, I believe. You know, he was still doing it. But it's like, it just wasn't as much because the way the music progressed, uh, they just kind of moved away from that that style and that sound, yeah, I actually. I yeah, I think it was mostly the sound that they kind of associated with the old days that they wanted kind of to be more modern. But you know, slap can be used in very modern way as well. That's and true. I I read no, I seen uh, one of the videos uh, from uh, Christian McBride, and he was talking about it. And you know, I listened to Milt Hinton, and then I tried to do it, and I can't do yep. it. Milt Hinton was the guy, you know, and stuff like that. But then you also if you hear like guys like Ray, Ray Brown, he knew how to slap, but he didn't mm-hmm. like it. And he, you know, he's like, oh, this is kind of like a primitive way of playing. Kind of in that, you know, not exact words, but kind of. Yeah. In that, it's like it started moving way. away from it. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and one other thing that I do speculate, because, you know, somewhere in the 50s, uh, they really started moving, shifting away from always using gut strings to using more steel strings. And I mean, like you can slap on steel strings. I do it now on my K. I have steel strings versus my standard. I have uh, guts. Milt Hinton did it, you know, the later part of his life. But a lot of cats I know that I've talked with didn't really care for slapping on steel strings a lot because it's just the sound and feel of it compared to the guts, you know. I know. I play steel strings and I slap all the time. But yeah, it sounds you know, good. I, I, you know, I hear like I, I, I hear you what you, you know, what you're talking, and. Um, you know, we, we get like we got like lots of comments so far. Uh, let me just read a few. Uh, Simon, he said, "Can you show us some of that old school pizzicato?" <laughs> yeah. And um, what else do we have? Um, so let me see this. Somebody else requested. Um, cannot find here like you know but ryan said just hoping we get to hear some sweet sweet slapping <laughs> uh, but let, let's hear something and okay. miller he said just waiting for some ba- bass echo so there's no real echo but like, okay okay so let's 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 you know play something what do you what, what would you like to play um you know what i think i'm just gonna play a little something and we're gonna go from there it's probably gonna be like a rhythm changes or something like that now i got a question for you which one do you want you want the K or you want the standard? Well, I definitely want both, like want during both? the show. So whatever you prefer, like first, whatever feels better for the rhythm change, choose that one. Uh, they're both I can do both fine, easily. So let's just start the K since this is the one I've had the longest. And uh yeah, I'm using right. steel strings on it, but uh let me move this up. One thing I always love to do is just like B flat rhythm changes. That's like some of my favorite stuff. But here we go.
awesome. We got Brave Job Mobetta from Darren Jennings and uh, Woods Sam. from Laura Lindley. I, Laura, so I played with Laura. Um, you remember I was telling you about the swing band? Yep. Um, so I played with her and her and her husband. They have a group called Mint and Julep Jazz Band. And um, we do a lot of stuff, um, Lindy Hop. So that's actually one of the one of the groups I actually get to do a lot more, you know, old style playing, especially like the slap stuff. So it's good to see you, Laura. Well, glad that you joined us. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is intimacy now. You know, we're in each other's houses, yeah. so it doesn't get you know much closer than this. And twerk, uh, I believe I he's from New Orleans. He said, "Like play that standard." All right. All so right, hopefully, man. here's the standard then. I want to do that now. All right, let's do it. And I'm going to actually do the same thing so you can hear the different sounds. Uh, cool, sounds good to me. With the guts on it. Uh, I love this cut. 1938 American Standard Cut, ladies and gentlemen. Killer. Keep the base. Keep the base. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first thing, um, something happened with your mic. Your mic oh, went. Little... I, now it's I, better. Now I it's turned better. it off. That's why. I accidentally ah, okay. turned it off. Okay. We we could hear the bass fine. So um, besides that, everything. So your voice was a little little a little lower, but besides that, it was fine. Okay. Um, uh, one thing that I definitely plan to ask you, and Oliver Baroni is also wanted to ask you. He's said, like interesting finger position. Mm -hmm. um, how I see it, you re it reminds me a little bit on Milt Hinton. Is that where you got that uh, that 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 style of playing, or that is? So okay. m when I started slapping, I've actually been trying to slap when I really started playing a bass, but I started getting like really practicing it the summer of 2018 and I was working on that trip like that fast triplet you saw I did earlier but um uh, and I realized you know I was always playing with my hand like this but if you notice I normally play more like how M Milk does and I didn't realize that until a little bit later I was struggling trying to figure out how to um to do that you know like that without beating my fingers up trying to doing it head on you know so a lot of that actually came from Milt Hinton and, and watching Willie Dixon too. I noticed how their hands were almost like how I'm playing pizzicato, but like slapping wise. So I almost had to relearn how to do slapping. Um, and actually this was last summer. So summer 2019, right after I got back from the uh, ISB competition, I figured out how I can turn my hand and get that like kind of that one and two and three and four. And like technique and I had to build up the calluses on uh, right here that runs the length of my index finger so uh, that's yeah that really came from the Milt Hinton and like Willie Dixon style because I was into I was fascinated how they got some of those different rhythmic uh, ideas and motives out that I couldn't get done while just playing you know like the kind of more palm like being perpendicular to uh, the fingerboard. Yeah, like not many people use it. I, I mean, I think mm -hmm. that uh, Roland Gary used the same same style, the same same style. He's using the same slap technique, and Milt Hinton is, was obviously, I think, the most famous. And I'm not sure like how like a majority of those cats from the Blondies you you know play. They might use it like that or not. I'm not, I'm not sure not not really sure so you're using the same technique on guts and steel right mm -hmm. same technique and but for triplets you 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 did it a little bit different why why are you doing why are you switching your hand what, what? so i actually it depends on the tempo of the tune for the triplets because i can do the triplet like <laughs> 
But depending on how, how fast the tune is, that might be a way too cumbersome to try to, you know, get back and forth. So if it's a faster tune, I would normally swap to, so I... Because there is almost no way I could do that without physically wearing myself out, you know, and get it as clean if I try to do it the other way. But if I'm playing like a slower tune, like... You know, something like that. Sometimes I, my hand, and this is something I'm trying to practice to get better. So I'm just, I'm you know more, a better musician at it. Me trying to do the the triplet slap that way, as is actually sloppy, and I can't get the, the clicks to be as, um, as even sounding. So it'd be more like. So it's like even though I kind of got it to, to work for me, it didn't really work the same as. You know, so you would say that that part of that kind of like a swing and then jazz sound comes from the hand position. It's just, I mean, as far as the slapping part, um, yes, it's more so just it's it's more so just trying to get like the certain rudiments and stuff out. Not really so much more the swing because the swing part is not really that. It's more so, like I said, it's just um, being able to execute what I'm trying, what I'm hearing to go along with the song or whatnot or the feel. Um, that's that's really it. That's the only reason I will change from, you know, that versus just like that. And is there anything, are there any other uh, um, patterns or whatever you want to call it, rudiments like that, that you, you would switch your hand like you're doing for the triplets, for the fast triplets? Not really, because most of the other Not stuff... Really? I can do just fine with uh, my hand to the side. Now, sometimes I might I might change it just depending on how my hand's feeling because, you know, every now and again, you wear your hand out in a spot and it's just like, you know, sometimes it's, it's easy. And, and this I find more so when I play my K with the steel strings because even though they slap well, they, they you know, it's a you already know, it's a whole different feel from playing gut strings, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, it's just the way they wear in your hands, especially when I'm playing like in some of the swing bands and stuff. If I'm like walking, almost like how Pops Foster is like. <laughs> if I'm trying to do some stuff like that, it's actually a lot easier um, to do it on my standard with the gut strings versus the K. Because those, those steel strings, the, the slightly lower action and the mm. feel just, it kind of eats at your fingers a lot more. So sometimes I have to kind of adjust to that. Yeah. Do you think that if you if you if you make the the action a little higher on the steel that that would it would help or not? Mm -mm. Or is, no. No. Because okay. it's it's a mixture of um, the feeling of it. Because I mean the steel strings are so much thinner in diameter, uh, so it feels more like wire. And then also they're higher tension than the gut strings. So it's like this is just one of the reasons I prefer gut strings for. Uh, especially playing like the old style, like the, the quarter note walking, because it's so much less effort on my end. Now, yeah, I will yeah. say it's interesting. Sometimes it's easy to do that fast triplet on steel strings because like just they, um, they're not as springy, you know? It's, it's so weird how that happens. I, like Sometimes I've actually been able to get that fast triplet out so much easier. Um, but I prefer to, to do that on gut strings if I can. All right. Uh, with th this all leads me to, since we're talking about terminology, uh, there's lots of like different um, approaches. And I have my own thing, and I wrote about it on the Art of Slab Base uh, website. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone, since no, just, there's no book or like uh, uh, standardized terminology that, that everybody is using, uh, kind of everybody has its own thing. Yeah. So, um, I want to uh, I want to hear about how uh, what is the terminology that you're using when you're explaining uh, slap patterns or slap riffs or rudiments as you call okay. it. Okay. So I mean, one thing when I've uh, taught some slap some of my fr some friends and peers and stuff about you know what I'm doing as far as slapping, it just depends like I kind of try to break them up like so you got your quarter note <laughs> You got like 
the gallop, how we use it in jazz. That boom, chicka, boom, chicka. And then um, you have the triplet. And then the one that was really hard, the, well, the two that were hard, the hardest ones for me to really get down, in my opinion, was the quadruplet. More so trying to get it up, uh, up to speed, so like. And then uh, the other one would be like the, it's pretty much like, like when you pull, it's, it's like it's like you're walking it, so like a, I guess you would call it like the eighth note. So, you know, you pull up and you hit the slap back instead of just a basic quarter, it's like you're getting the eighth note. So, let's see. Up oh, can uh, I'm seeing some people say they can't really hear me well. I can hear you pretty fine. Uh, okay. uh, this is only one comment about it, so uh, you guys can mention. Usually, like quite a few people complain okay. if, if there's a really a sound problem. So we'll see. I, I heard you perfectly. You okay, guys, good. please mention if there's something wrong. Uh, so you're basically not using that uh, that terminology like a single slap, double slap, stuff like that. So you don't. Me personally, uh, I haven't used that, but I've definitely, you know, I'm, I am fairly new to like trying to explain some of it because a lot of the stuff is just, I'm hearing it. It's like, okay, I know what I'm looking for. I've never really had to sit down and like go like, okay, well, I just did X, Y, and Z until, you know, really this pandemic started. And I was like, okay, I actually need to figure out how to break it down. Cause I know we all do use different terms. Um, cause I really don't call it like the, like, like I was saying, like we were talking about the gallop. Uh, I normally not really call it the gallop. I really just kind of call that like how we too feel in a sense. Because when we're walking, normally if I'm playing a song uh, and I'm doing that, that's more so the two feel of the song. So like, um, let me see. Let me just do uh, uh, the, what is it? Bourbon Street Parade. <laughs> So I'll call that more like the two feel, because that's where the the um, the notes are coming down on one and three. So it's like you know if I'm just it's 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 our equivalent of the two feel, and then I really start just kind of breaking up into the rudiments when I start trying to get more fancy with it, like the. Yeah, there's like lots of like, especially like bluegrass people, they call it one way, rockabilly po people call it the other way. So mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm saying, you know, I want to like, like hear like everyone's you know, like take Turn. on it and then like the, the reasoning behind it. So we can, you know, came out, come up with something that makes sense yeah. um, uh, for everyone. Uh, I spent like lots of time thinking about it and analyzing. So, so, you know, it, it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I would like to hear you play more. Like, is there uh, like, but play a little longer, like, you know, like some, you know, like long, long solo on any bass you want. Okay. Um, and, uh, and after that, I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, to tell me what makes, what do you think, how do you utilize slap in jazz? And like, what are the, uh, all these patterns, I don't mean like single slap gallop, all that stuff, like, you know, like syncopation or mm -hmm. like flipping the beat, stuff like that. Uh, because I also heard you play, I think, a quarter note triplet in one of the uh, uh, pieces that you sent me. Oh, yeah. So I think it will be cool, like, to talk about that. Uh, but just please play something first, you know, so that we can, you know, you know, enjoy more. Okay. And then, uh, and then, uh, talk about it how about can we um can we actually pull up a youtube video one of those ones that sure I sent you? Can, let's pull up i think it's the slapping the blues because and then we can even talk about some of that because it really um uh, it's a good visual of how i'm actually utilizing it when i'm on the bandstand 
Yeah, and sure, then of course I can play a little bit more later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just give me a second for all of that. Okay. Um. Well, if you want, I I can do something real quick. That uh, no, that would be actually excellent. So if you can okay. do that while I prepare this. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Let me um. <laughs> Thank you. Pull this up real quick. And all my jazz cats, y'all, y'all bear with me. I know. I might be sinning as I'm about to use this uh, iReal Pro, the playback, but it's a tool. And my dad says a tool is only as good as you use it. So I'm just using it for this. Let's see. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Thank you, man. You know, it's actually better that you're using that, you know, the um, iRealBook Pro uh, backing tracks. So I had problems with, you know, some of my previous guests that used uh, their own music, but it was copyrighted because then I got the little flags from YouTube. Ah, um, gotcha. um, so you use like some, so, so how, how would you, uh, is there anything that, is there a way that you can describe like how, how you're kind of jazzing it up? Like if you can talk, like we have like lots of guests, I mean, viewers that are not from jazz world. So mm -hmm. um, if you can kind of explain that a little bit that, you know, skipping the beat and like all those syncopations and like that's, that's all that Milt Hinton was using. And it's, and it, I think it sounds great. It really brings, Thanks, it, it, it music breeds that way yeah and the hardest i would say the hardest part about when i was trying to play with that backing track was of course trying to get the sound right so i could hear on my end uh but also it's not the same as when i play music when i make music with people on a bandstand because i can actually react and then when we see the video on youtube that i posted uh, that we're going to share up here you will i can you will be able to see what it is and i can actually explain better on that but the biggest thing is uh and this is a joke, but it's like it's a, uh, it's also real serious. Like uh, James Brown said, uh, 
what instrument are you playing? And it was like, like the saxophone, Mr. Brown. I was like, no, incorrect. He's like, what instrument are you playing? The drums, Mr. Brown. I was like, that's right. So when I'm playing um, the bass, especially when I'm slapping, and I mean, this is, this is just something. Oh, shoot. Thanks, Ma. There we go. Got the mic. There we go. Can y'all hear me fine? All right. Um, so the biggest thing is when I'm I'm trying to be very rhythmic with what I'm doing because it, jazz is not always about just all the harmonic complexity, but it's also the rhythm, the groove behind it, because that's what makes it feel good. So when I'm playing a slap solo, I'm keeping time internally and even listening to my bandmates if I have a drummer or you know whatever else, a keyboard or a piano, or whatnot. Um, what I'm doing there is I'm keeping, I have the time internalized so I can change the time and play around with it. And I don't always have to be on like, you know, the, all the downbeats and stuff. Cause if you heard, there's a couple of times where I actually will turn the beat around and it sounds like I'm playing off. Like I lost, lost a bit, but then you'll feel me come right back and it's like nothing happened. And I've, what I've actually done with that was from all the drummers I played in the area and, you know, not, not in the area and whatnot is, you know, I'm listening to things that they're doing. Cause like I said, I'm playing the drums, uh, even though it's on the bass. So I'm thinking of it like that. So how can I be very rhythmic, but with like some type of melodic motif or some melodic idea that's right behind it. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm playing that stuff. And that's one of the things that to me is just like, just makes it like not jazzy per se, but just like, it's, it's different from, you know, if you're playing a different style of music, whether it's bluegrass or rockabilly or, you know, I'm trying to incorporate more di just different things that I've learned while playing jazz into while I'm slapping. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. I would like to play now um, that video that you sent me. Um, which is which band slapping the blues which is that from with which band is that so this is when i was playing um with kobe watkins group tech uh fantastic drummer i love playing with him excuse me um he's played with sonny rollins and a lot of great names that i won't go into right now um but i was playing with his group tech down in charlotte north carolina at the middle c jazz club right before you know this pandemic took over uh, here in the U.S. And um, that's this was the cl I think this one is the closing number from the second show that night. And my parents, they will recognize. I know they're watching right now. Uh, but this this is I my slap. So, <laughs> hey, mom. Hey, dad. Thank you for joining. Uh, but I remember because uh, my dad also caught a set a different angle. And I think I sent that to you privately um, when we were talking um, beforehand. It was like half of this clip that we're about to watch. And uh, you could hear them, you know, uh, <laughs> yelling and hollering like of joy and excitement from, you know, what's going on. Because I'm also one thing I like to do is I'm feeding off the energy. So sometimes like, you know, I might I might be just kind of playing bass. I keep in time. But what you'll notice in this video is I'll hear something like the piano does something or the drums do something. And I'll, re I'll, re um, I'll react to that. And you'll hear that in my playing. So, yeah, let's let's take a look at this video so everybody can see what I'm talking about. It just I'll need a little help from the audience because I actually never did this sharing thing this way. Okay. So um, let me see how I can do that. And you have to tell me if the uh, audio is live or not. Uh, so um, let's do. So this is slapping the blues. <laughs>
Yeah, this is my favorite part coming up right here. awesome thank you yeah, that's great um i'm not sure like there, we have more and more people so if you just joined us you're here um at the seventh episode of the slap stream the only live stream ever in the history <laughs> <laughs> of music dedicated you know to slap bass or playing upright bass Ooh. and yeah and we this is the seventh episode i already featured six guys uh six amazing players um my name is george Zestiepovich. i'm bull fiddle cat on all social media my guest today is william ledbetter some of you might know him as mobetta which is his stage name which will be my next question as well he's um his instagram handle is mobetta underscore jazz but he's utter um other social media links are below this video, so make sure to check that out. And make sure to subscribe to my channel because it uh, has like lots of cool slap stuff and lots of uh, even cooler stuff. Um, videos are coming up, so I don't want you to miss that. So ring that bell and subscribe. And um, that's about it as, as far as that speech goes. Um, so Mobetta. Where that's yeah. coming? Where, where that comes from? So Mobetta, the nickname. I was um, I've been performing for a long time, especially out. You know, I was playing guitar back in middle school and high school, and that's I was gigging actually back in that time, and uh, I would do a lot of shows, you know, on my own, and my parents would run sound for me. So we were we were trying to figure out a name, and um, if I'm not mistaken. I, one night my dad he he came he gave me that name and it just stuck and it, i mean it works perfectly because mo better let better it's like it just flows pretty well and uh everybody everybody gets tickled when they um <laughs> when i when i introduce myself I'm like yo i'm i'm mo better they call me mo better they be like oh okay it just kind of changed the atmosphere and it's like okay and then what I try to do is I try to live up to that name, you know, wherever I go, where all the stuff I do, especially mu music, you know, I make it more better. So thank you, dad. Thank you, mom, for giving me that name, that stage name. Oh, that's cool. All right. Thank you, dad. <laughs> Not, I don't, I don't think that many uh, parents g gave the stage names to their <laughs> kids. This is cool. Oh, yeah. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if you guys hear this. I have some church bells behind me. I'm still in Croatia. I'm not back to Slapsville. <laughs> so just I'm in a balcony, you know, trying not to. Uh, it's a beautiful backdrop, man. 
Yeah, I mean, it's the sky with the, you know, with the moon. Mm -hmm. It's the real moon out here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just in the balcony trying not to be too loud. And then I don't have my bass here. So, unfortunately, we cannot do the slap bass lesson that I always do. Um, but um, I already discussed this with Mobetta. So, so he's going to, we're going to do the slap bass lesson some other time. Yep. When I come back to Slapsville. So, when I have my bass. And uh, we're going to do some jazz slapping. And so, Ooh. as I mentioned, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. You don't get that chance that, that often. And it's, you know, I'm really thankful to all these guests that I have that are, that are willing to share their knowledge and, and expertise and to make this style progress. Mm -hmm. it's really, it's, it, it really has to progress. You know, I'm so excited. I've been so excited about slap for such a long time. And then, you know, I think that there's... Once we get back to regular normal, normal, not to new normal, <laughs> I think that you know it's gonna shine even more. Uh, another video that I wanted to feature uh, you is the one uh, where you play with um, Limehouse Blues. Oh yeah, and you played um, with. Uh, uh, let me just find that with a vibraphone player, right? Is mm -hmm. that your Christian Tambor. Okay, cool. He's a jazz guy, or yeah, I mean, he plays he plays everything, but he's he's a uh, just a wonderful individual. But like, he, a great vibraphone player uh, and a great pianist. And I mean, he he travels all across you know U.S. and out the country and all that stuff too. And I'm very thankful to be able to play with him, you know, because he lives here in North Carolina now. Uh, and I play with him with some some of the stuff he does, and uh, and one of the artists I play with a lot now. Uh, her name is Shauna Tucker. He's uh, her pianist and uh, music director, I believe that's the right term. But uh, I'm so glad to be in contact with them. So he started doing like on Instagram, uh, like these minute long videos because uh, just, you know, just doing like a clip of a song or something, some brief arrangement and just posting him playing and stuff. And I was like, man, these things are really cool. You know, we should we should do one together. And he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, and I was, and I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to do something, you know, where I slap behind. Cause I was at that, especially at that time I was, I go through phases of different people I'm listening to. And I was back into my Milt Hinton phase and I was really big on slap happy. So, you know, he was playing slap behind vibraphone and I was like, yo, let's do something like that. You know, let's do, let's pick a song and just do it. And then let's try to get it under that one minute so we can post it on Instagram without it being a, um, an IG story or something like the IG TV. And um, we uh, we talked about the logistics, the arrangement, and all that stuff, and Limehouse Blues. We did it. Yeah. Yep. Let me do that. Um, so here we are, Limehouse Blues. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I wish you played longer. I'm glad you, you chose that song because Limehouse Blues kind of is, is the song that everybody likes. You know, I noticed that, you know, you know, like everybody likes playing it and everybody enjoys hearing it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool. It's a classic and, old one, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, but it's one that kind of it's it's not, you know, just in the jazz world, you know, like, it's yeah. like you know, lots of. Uh, I mean, lots of gypsy jazz players play it, and then mm -hmm. you know, some, you know, bluegrass play, uh, players play it, and it's a, it's a, it's a, cool, it's a cool little tune. It is. Um, so, is are there any plans like to play anything more with 
with, with him or with any other duets that you plan to do? Yeah, so I, um, as far as slap stuff, not exactly, but we were planning on it, and it's still going to happen. Uh, it's just I've been trying to do a lot of stuff around here, so I haven't been able to really do any videos like talking about it recently. But we were probably going to do, I believe it is, um, uh, it's an Oscar Pettifer tune. The name's escaping me right now. Trickatism. We we're probably going to do like a, a little arrangement of that real quick. Uh, one of these days. Um, uh, I, I think I, well, I was telling you off um, before we started this this live stream. Um, some of my best friends that are bass players, uh, Butler Knowles, and uh, here in North Carolina, and then Russell Hall up in New York. Uh, we're going we're going to do like our version of like a, a super bass thing. We uh, we joke around because we, we all love gut strings, so we call ourselves the Gut Brothers um, in that aspect. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, some of those things I'll be getting those out. You know, within the coming weeks and months or so it just kind of depends on everybody's time. Cause even though it is a pandemic, it's like, there are still some things where like everybody's taken care of. So, um, hopefully those will be coming out soon. Yeah. You should definitely slap. And then I think that you should definitely use more slap in kind of like a more of a modern jazz context because it mm -hmm. sounds, it sounds great. I, I love playing. I remember, uh, jamming with some um, uh, jazz guys in in New York, and then it was a friend of mine was Marko Georgievich was playing drums, and then he invited me. Hey, you know, just like let's join us. I know you're not a jazz guy, but you play jazz. And I was like, all right, oh, I'll do it. And then you know how New York guys are like. And then I remember guitar player was like, yeah, but you you don't want to, you don't want to. Is this like too fast for you? I'm like, come on, like. It's not too fast. Cause just, just play it. I can walk. Yeah, for right. and, and I was like, and he was like, but you don't want to solo, right? Like, I'm like yeah. <laughs> like, all right. I don't want to be like, you know, <laughs> like, like that was no. no and then I, I became like, oh no, I can't handle anything. Just give, give it to me. Like, I played mm -hmm. solo, and I was like super like into it. I played full on slap solo, simple, Woo! but the audience like went crazy, you know, because it was something unique it's, and something yeah, you haven't heard. And it was not, if we say like intellectually and musically that advanced, you know, as far as harmonies or, or even melodically, but it was rhythmically, it was, it was something that really changed the, the thing, but it was still jazz, you know, and then Rhyth rhythmically, I mean, liked it. It, the, uh, a lot of people forget it's like, uh, with like jazz music and all that stuff, it's not all about the harm, like all this complex harmony, it's like the rhythmic complexity complexity is also a big part but and it's not everybody but sometimes like people forget about that that stuff and i'm like that's one thing i like to do because i'm still working on my harmonic knowledge but it's like the rhythm stuff that's one thing that i will say i have excelled in really well so far and you know i'm still growing in that but it's like that rhythmic stuff is that's no joke man you know you, it we make it look easy you know especially as we do it more and more uh, Cause I've watched, like I said, I've watched some of your videos. I'm like, man, that's killing. But it's like, and it looks easy. But I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to go and shed that. You know, <laughs> some people would be like, oh yeah, you know, that seems pretty easy. Like, uh, uh. You got to go shed that yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's actually a lot harder than you think. Yeah, you have to put some effort. <laughs> <laughs> um, Especially to make it feel good too, man. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's all about the groove. You know, yeah. even if you play simple notes and simple harmonies, if you have the groove people can dance to it or just clap or enjoy then it's then it makes then music makes sense if, if it's if it's not you know something you know if, if you don't have a groove you don't have anything you know so exactly so uh what i wanted to ask you is about you mentioned a couple of band leaders that you're playing with and i would like you to uh mention them again mm -hmm. and the band leaders that you played with before um okay in the last five years the, since you've been playing bass and i want to hear what was their uh thinking like about about slap did they um did, did they want you to play slap or they said like oh don't play the loud stuff or uh oh no they um, enjoy or it or like or so is everybody enjoys like what do they say or like oh, playing this part playing not don't play in that part you know if you can you know oh, yeah. talk a little bit about that so um 
like I say, I, and I see Laura still here. Hey, Laura, um, with Mint Julep Jazz Band. Um, we also play together with uh, Keenan McKenzie and his Riffers. Um, those are like, those are two groups I play with a lot, doing more uh, like the Lindy Hop and like just like dance bands, which I really enjoy because I like watching people dance while we're playing. Um, I play in two big bands, uh, Piedmont Triad Jazz Orchestra, based here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and then the Camel City Jazz Orchestra, based in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, uh, I play in a lot of small combos. So I play with uh, Thomas Taylor, great drummer, great mentor, everything. Um, uh, he's based in Raleigh, but you know he commutes all throughout North Carolina. Um, and y'all forgive me if I, if I forget a few people. Uh, I play with one of my good friends, uh, Sean Mason. He's currently up in New York, uh, one of the baddest cats on piano. And I've actually learned a lot, you know, just practicing and shedding with him. Uh, um, I mean, the list goes on. And, I, and please forgive me for those who I, I fail to mention right now. Uh, I love all of y'all because it's I, I'm thankful to play with everybody that I do play with. But answering your other part of the question, um, everybody has welcomed this slap like a lot of people are very impressed and are like oh yeah we need want we want or need this you know in our group uh because you know it's it's there's there's a lot of bass players that do do it and sometimes it's like it's knowing when and when not to do it and some people just aren't doing it. at least i haven't been around too too many that are doing it you know like I'm doing, like I like the. It's a big part of me. Just like I try to do. I'm a big fan of Paul Chambers and a lot of uh, and Slam Stewart. So I like to try to do a lot of the um, the Arco solos too. But like it's just learning different different ways to play the bass. So uh, having that under my belt is really come in handy. And I've actually got a lot of gigs and met a lot of different people from uh, having that in my toolbox in a sense. Um, Cause it's like, it just adds to the music and it's, and the biggest thing is knowing when and when not to do it. Cause it's like, I, I'm not playing slap all the time. There's some gigs I don't play slap on at all. Um, but if there's a way that I can, oh, I love to throw it in there, especially cause it brings, you know, I love holding down my role as a bass player in the back, you know, and then keeping time and making things like groove. Cause I'm pretty much driving the, uh, the bass and the drums are normally driving the band from behind, but you know, just being able to pull it out, especially when it's a solo, like solo time, you know, especially if you've been doing playing like a three hour gig or something like that. You know, it's nice when, you know, some people, they the, 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 the attention is focused on you for a little bit. So that slapping, it stands out because, I mean, you already know the bass is not really the loudest instrument normally, especially if you're playing an acoustic setting. Um, so that slap, it just pops and it's like, you know, you start throwing in all the cool, complicated techniques and then people are starting like, Oh shoot! I wasn't expecting that, and I've literally got a lot of different calls because of that. You know, it's like, oh, we didn't know you could do that, or that's really cool. I've never heard that, you know, in this context or whatnot. So, and I've had it from every, you know, from pretty much every person I've worked with so far. I've been able to like implement it in some form or fashion, and still trying to implement it. You know, still trying to figure out ways where. I can utilize it more. But the biggest thing is it's just knowing when and when not to use it. Cause like I said, there's, there's sometimes where it's just not called for in my profession, but uh, there's also a lot of times where it is called for, or it's, it's there, you know, it's, it's waiting to get the call, uh, you know, to come to the forefront because why not? That's what I like to hear because often, you know, I hear, you know, stories, like especially in the bluegrass world, but they say like, oh, no, 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 jazz, you know, the slap is not bluegrass style, so don't play, don't use it, or stuff like that. And then occasionally I would hear that, you know, from jazz musicians as well. But there's like really just a few guys that are able to play on a, on a little bit higher level in, in jazz music. So, so then it's just like, oh, maybe, you know, I'm not sure, you know, who, what to think about it, you know. But I always thought, you know, slap is jazz technique it should be used in jazz um yeah but i'm glad nobody was stopping you like telling you like, mm -mm. don't play it that's that's great um another question that i always ask is like what would be your advice how do you how how to get the gig how uh, to get a gig day and age kind of like things change like internet presence is really important in a way but you know you 
people that that get get calls like to join a band it's always it's usually somebody that they saw somewhere or heard so it's uh, or a recommendation <coughs> so what would be your uh your way of getting gigs okay so the biggest thing and this is one of the best things about you know think for my dad you know being military is uh he's drilling me you know how to handle my business properly you know uh, planning out, uh, backwards planning that, that is okay. You know, if, if people call me for a gig, you know, where is it at? What's the attire? What time you need me there? All this stuff and be professional. And then just, you know, be very punctual with it because there's a lot of cases where musicians, you know, they can be great players and actually, and still a lot of, a lot more musicians that are way better players than myself, but they're not as reliable because one thing I've always tried to build in anyone around here that knows my name knows I try my hardest to be as professional as possible and handle my business. Now, I'll, I'll cut up with you and have fun. But when it comes down to the business stuff, I'm always on time. I'm, you know, I'm easy to work with. And it's just like I'm, I'm trying to be as professional as possible because that's very important. And it's, you know, building your uh, the rep. Uh, um, reputation for your name and stuff, especially, you know, I've, you, you already know my, my, uh, stage name is Mo Better. So it's like, okay, I gotta be Mo Better, but you know, not only just playing, but Mo Better has to be good at his time management when it comes to gigs, planning out, okay, this gig, you know, it's a three hour gig, but it takes two and a half hours to get there. I need to leave by X, Y, and Z to, uh, get there. And so what I'm getting at with that, all that has actually come up and, um, uh, has been associated with my name is just being very professional uh, and very easy to work with. Cause when I was, when I started out at UNCG, you know, I was learning the base. I'm still, I'm always still learning the base now, but uh, I couldn't solo that well. I tried to have good time and a good sound. And I was, you know, like I said, I was easy to work with. People called me, I put it on my calendar. I was like, okay, I'm ready for this. Anytime I got a call, you know, and then also when you're on the bandstand, you know, handle your business stuff and be, be very well with it because I tell a lot of young cats. Um, and this is something that my professor told me like Steve Haynes, Chad Evie, Mondre Moffitt, uh, Brandon Lee, just to name a few. Um, every gig is an audition for your next gig. That that's something that's very important that a lot of people forget about. Cause I've gotten hired uh, I was on a gig and I got hired for another gig because I was at that gig or somebody within that band that I just met. They were like, OK, I like this cat, you know, his plan and how he's handling his business. They get the contact information from that band leader that hired me that night. And it's just like a whole, you know, daisy chain of stuff happening from their uh, domino effect of just good things, you know, and it just keeps building. So the biggest thing is I try to keep uh, a good reputation on my name. As far as getting gigs, because as a bass player, you are in high demand. I mean, George, George, you already know that there's not a lot of us out there, you know, playing bass, especially upright, per se. Um, but especially in the jazz community. So it's like there's plenty of gigs out there if you're uh, doing your due diligence and, um, you know, for that, because, um, you know. I mean, that's that's really it that's right what, there. Yeah, that's what Oliver uh, Baroni mentioned in the last um, last week's slap stream. You know, just to be professional, you know, and have everything well organized, and then be you know, don't be late, and like you know, be mm -hmm. responsive. That kind of yeah. helps, kind of like more than <laughs> being a good player. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you want to be a great player and stuff, uh, and. Yeah especially we're always growing in our instrument, but excuse me. Um, it's very important. You know, it's, it's more, if it's more than just playing, it is more than just playing. I mean, I've, there's many times when I don't have a gig, I'll try to go out and hang. Like I'll go listen to other people, you know, network, mingle, have a good time, support them. Same way I want them to do for me, but also just like, okay, I'm hearing some good things. And then, you know, you make those connections and then be like, OK, this person's always coming out or checking out. You know, I'm always seeing them at my gig or something. Or, you know, maybe if this person doesn't ha it can't make it for some odd reason, you you might get a call for that. You know, 
it's so many different factors. In general, you have to be a good guy. Good guy and a good player. And you'll get gigs. <laughs> That's it, really. Um, what would be, you know, you have, you know, lots of experience, even you haven't been playing that long comparable to, you know, some mm -hmm. other guests that I had before, which, you know, it's like, you know, 50 years of playing. <laughs> wow. Or something. And uh, um, it's, uh, uh, but you do have lots of ex experience. And I wonder what would be, uh, what would be a, an advice or advices that you would give to younger bass players or to younger selves, you saw a younger self, you know, like what would you tell, you know, yourself like five years ago, 10 years ago, like, you know, whatever, you know, like, but you know, music and bass related. Practice, practice hard, be, you know, uh, diligent about your practice. I'm, I'm trying to work on that stuff as we speak now, because I go through phases where I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm practicing hard and sometimes I just want to be lazy, you know. It happens to all of us. But really, you know, practice, always listen to some something new, you know, get some different ideas in your ears. Uh I do try to reach out to friends and, you know, see what they're listening to. I'll check that out. Um I mean, just expose yourself to a lot of good stuff. Um that's really the biggest thing. Um yeah, I mean, just keep you keep you keep an open mind because you know there's really no one way to some things, and you know I've learned that over my years of you know just living and just also being a musician, uh, especially when you play tunes. That's one thing I've learned: like be open to somebody else's interpretation of this tune or whatnot. Because a little example, like we play a tune one way, we can play it like like a New Orleans feel or whatnot. But that other t the other way I can play with somebody else and we can be blazing really fast on something. And, you know, like, don't be so set in your ways where it's like, oh, well, we got to do it like this because X, Y, and Z. We always got to do it like this. No, no, no. Be open to it. Like, that's really it. Just be open to a lot of different things. And uh, you don't have to like everything, but just take it in and, you know, appreciate it and learn from that. So that's something that's something I would tell to, like, you know, these younger cats. Uh, and even to a younger myself, be honest with you. And I'm telling myself now because I'm still pretty young and I'm still trying to grow to the next level. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, get out there, especially when it comes to playing. Get out there and mix and mingle with a lot of different people, especially out of your comfort zone. You get out of your comfort zone because that's how you grow. And it took, and I, I can, I'm still stubborn sometimes, but I, I have put myself in a lot of positions where I was like, oh my goodness, like, I'm super sad. I'm like, it's, it's like, it's scary or it's like, this is not like, why did I do this to myself? Uh, but in the long run, like, I'm looking at things that I did to myself in 2017 that I'm thankful for because it's forced me to grow now. So like, Get out your comfort zone. That's the biggest. That's another big one that I will put in there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I would like to hear you play more. Like, can we hear something else? Okay. Which bass are you going to be using? I think I'm going to go back to the standard. To play, man. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, hear. I just got my standard back. Uh, this is one thing I love about living in Greensboro. We have a, the bass violin shop here right in Greensboro. So, I, like, I... I get to go and hang out there a lot and play different bases, but they always take good care of me. So I just got this bass back like a couple of weeks ago. All right. So what you're gonna be playing? Um, I'm not sure yet. Let me. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we haven't talked about this like much, but you know, I just want to hear you play. I mean, I'm I want also wait like for some you know, uh, feedback, slap back in the comments. You know, yeah. if you have if you have any suggestions. Or if you have questions, now it's time to to ask. You know, this is your unique opportunity, so please do that. And then you have responsibility too, because you know, slap bass players in the coming years, they're going to be you know watching this and learning from this. So if you have something you think that we missed something, make sure to mention, and then we're going to talk about it. And you know, just play and slap. Cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I think. Let's see. I'm gonna try. I got rhythm. Let's see if that works out.
that's so cool so cool and you know i love that you chose that tune that everybody should know um and that you just jammed it you know we haven't talked like you know what do you want to play what you know I usually like talk to to talk that to uh, to my guests beforehand and then so i know you know what i want to play so but i haven't asked you for some reason so you know so this is this is jazz way you know like just jam the tune <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm just trying to improvise it's like a lot of the context with my stuff is i'm playing behind people so a lot of stuff might seem repetitive but it's just like how do you make that feel good and sound good you know so absolutely i mean that's what we as bass players try to do you know like just like to 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 make somebody else shine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. and be featured then you know once if we get a solo cool if we don't it's cool as well you know yeah. we're the supporters you, there, was, there was one thing I, and i'm still trying to figure it out but i was working on uh i don't know if you saw that like like a slap instead of slapping here i'm actually like kind of slap pulling on a string past the fingerboard to get like that kind of floaty sound like mm -hmm. have you ever heard had any oh cool do that before well, I did, um, and in two different uh, occasions. But it's not; it was never. Um, a, uh, how can I put this? It, it was. It, it was not. Uh, art was not the reason for that. <laughs> so, ah. so like you, 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 you're having. You're doing that because you want to have like a different timber or you want to have a different mm -hmm. sound, different voice. So, but like I heard that in bluegrass, uh, you know, there's like a kind of like a famous story that one of the band leaders in bluegrass, Bill Monroe, didn't want his bass players to play uh, slap at all. So he was cutting their fingerboards. So like, so, if, so if somebody was, wow. was slapping, so they would use it, you know, under the fingerboard. That's so, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of like, you know, I heard and read that story and, you know, quite a few times, but um, I haven't confirmed it completely, but it's one of those like slap bass myths. But that's like, interesting. That's super interesting. Uh, and, and there's uh, also actually one uh, psychobilly guy who slaps a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, from the band uh, the Betnobile uh, from uh, Net uh, from Netherlands, I believe. Okay. And he he has a shorter sh shorter um, shorter fingerboard. So again, the timber was not the 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 reason for that. So it was just just like, oh, all right, I'll do it this way. Got so, you. But anyway, so so people did it, but it was not because of the research and finding it was just like whatever okay whatever whatever their reason was it i don't know it's it's interesting like in slap there's like a, quite a few a few things that you know are happened but um there's not really uh a reason for that like to do it like in like to, to achieve something special like like for example in the 40s and 50s some some uh, often in bluegrass they were detuning e string completely so it's out of tune and they would always slap i mean hit the e string mm -hmm. for some reason they thought that kind of produces a different timber i guess you know maybe that was the timber driven but uh and you know but I, I, you know, I, I, I tried it. I'm not, I never met anyone that actually did that um, professionally. So I was not able to, to, to get that information firsthand. Gotcha. Uh, but I know people did it. But so that's another, another one, like one of those, you know, whatever. You know, it's kind of yeah. like a little bit useless, I think. So. <laughs> um, you know, some people say that, you know, E string was kind of, useless back in the day because they, you couldn't really hear it so that's the reason why they did that they were like especially yeah they um yeah. most of them have were using uh like raw gut all like g d a and e well, I've, I've definitely seen a lot of raw a strings uh but those are definitely thuddy sounding like they don't they don't have a good sound at all to, well at least the e strings i never heard a really good one in my opinion uh a strings it 
can be kind of iffy. Maybe slap maybe slapping some Arco stuff, but um, yeah, that the E string is always even even like just for regular playing. Sometimes E strings can be kind of um interesting, you know. So yeah, yeah. Well, well I'm not a gut player, but it's uh, uh, but it's but it yeah, I I I can I can see that. I love playing guts actually. Yeah, but, you know, I never owned the base with guts. Gotcha. Especially if if if, if um, I have to play like you know New Orleans style jazz, mm -hmm. so it sounds it sounds cool. On, yeah, on, man. On guts for sure. And um, um, so this the, the a couple of things that you mentioned that I would like you to 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 talk about. So do you play uh, with the bow at all, like on guts? Oh, oh yeah. I actually. You do. Uh, Yep. Uh, hold on, just one second. I had it in my uh, in my other bow quiver, uh, uh -huh. but because like I said, I'm a big Paul Chambers and Slam Stewart fan. Uh, oh so, yeah. Like, Those guys. I try to great. do bow solos and like. Uh, um, do scabs you know, on top of it as well? Or? Yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can like. like Slam Stewart style. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm still these these guts are brand new, so I'm still trying to break them in. But um, I mean, I really like them on this bass. You know. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm actually one of the few, well, a few people that I really enjoyed the sound of bow guts. Like, I like that scratchy sound, that raspy sound. Yeah, guts are, you know, guts and bow have also kind of like a special, special timber that I like. I don't mm -hmm. use it, but it, I really like it. But you know, now I really like your playing with you know, like with the bow and guts. Do you mind like playing a little longer of that or like? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's do that. You know, I mean, it's, you can, I depend on the viewers, but you know, everybody's still here, so you know, I, I'm you know, I'm sure that they would like to hear that as well. Uh, let's see. This is a one of those. It's a Paul Chambers blues that I love playing. Uh, he plays it with the bow uh let me tune up first because guts are kind of iffy yeah all right while we're waiting for mobetta to tune like you know i will oh he's in tune okay so let's <laughs> let's do that I got a little shedding to do. I haven't really been practicing right. it too much. Uh, well, none of us, you know. <laughs> I'm here in Croatia with no bass like for the last three weeks, you know. So I haven't yeah. even touched the bass for almost a month. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm trying to get yeah. trying to get used to this because uh, this bass, uh, you know about the American Sands, they have a really long string length. So uh, 
it's a it's slightly longer than my K. Uh, I like the long stream link, but it's like just trying to be able to play in tune uh, has definitely been something I'm trying to figure out. Cause I mean, I've only had this bass back for like two weeks now. Oh and, wow! Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, I see a comment in there asking about what gut strings I'm using. Yes, from so, Joe Kyle. What's up, Joe? Uh, so I have used the quarters before, and I do like them. But I'm actually using uh, the guy's name is Damien. I I think that's how you say his last name, Dulecki. Um, he's a stream maker out in Oregon, um, and I really love his gut strings because they feel and sound great. The price is really good on them, and uh, they just last really long for me. Like my old set of guts which are still in good condition the dng i've had since 2018 and i've had no hairs on it which is and i mean i mean i play i'm playing like you know outdoors and just playing hard and all that stuff and i've had no hairs it's like it's will still withstood a lot of beatings you know <laughs> um so that's important for the guts guts can really you know especially if you're playing it, it it's kind of uh, um uh, how, what, what, what is the weather in where you live? Is it in, all over weather? the place. It's very, it's oh. really humid right now. I guess oh, we, that's what I'm saying. Humidity yeah. can really affect guts, right? Yes. I mean, like I'll leave this, you know, uh, either standing up in a corner or something over the night and go to sleep and then wake up. And sometimes the strings would be super out of tune, like super deep. The playing guts normally detune and then for some reason, rap guts like this, like get sharp. So that's something you have to be careful with because, you know, if they keep getting too sharp, they might, you know, break on you. And guts are too expensive for them to just be breaking on, you know. Uh, so it's like I've had the there's been a lot of times where I've been on gigs and I will literally be tuning every tune or sometimes in between tunes, you know, or like, I mean, in within a tune. I'm sorry. Uh, it just depends. Wow. I mean, you know, um uh, between the weather and then how hard I'm playing it. Especially if you tour, do you tour much or you play mostly locally? So I play, I, I play all across North Carolina mainly, but I do with some of the artists I have mentioned, I do go out of state. Uh, and I actually had some tours and stuff set up um, this year, but of course the uh, pandemic put a halt on all of that stuff. So I was actually yeah. going to be out on the West coast uh, for like, I think 10 to 14 days or something. Oh, cool! But, wow. but I yeah, I mean, is it postponed or? Huh? Is it postponed? As far as I know, it's canceled. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've been well, having some stuff. Please let me know, like. Yeah, well, man. Please let me know when you're coming up. Coming Most the, definitely. My side of the world. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and if where, where people can find out about your uh, your gigs, do you have a website or what are the main artists that you're playing with right now? So I don't unfortunately have a website yet. That's something that's been on my list to get done. And as time goes, I'm actually going to have to go ahead and do that so I, people can just easily follow. So I do post some things on Facebook and Instagram. But some of the artists I do play with, uh, like I said, Kobe Watkins. Um, sometimes I'm playing on some of his stuff. One of the biggest artists I play with, uh, and main, I'm in her band now, is Shauna Tucker, who I mentioned earlier um, uh, when I was telling you about Christian. So... Uh, I know she probably has some stuff like on her site and whatnot. Well, I don't know about right now because of, you know, this pandemic, but uh, yeah. you can follow her and nine out of 10 times I'll be with her. Uh, same thing with uh, the uh, with Mint Julep Jazz Band and then Keenan McKinney, Keenan McKenzie and, the, and his riffers. Uh, I know they post a lot of stuff on social media, whereas it's Instagram or Facebook. So, uh yeah, I'm normally I'm normally I've been I've really been riding the side man like uh, gig for a, a bit, which I enjoy, you know, so I have. So this is one thing that's been like negligent on my part as far as having a website where I'm just posting like all my stuff because I'm normally playing with everybody else. But uh, if you if you uh, follow me on Instagram or friend me on Facebook, uh, I normally do make posts and stuff, share it up there. All the links are below. As yeah. I mentioned, if you, if you joined uh, us later, like all uh, William's uh, links are below this video. So make sure to follow him so you'll know when he comes and play in your town. Yeah. Um, and do you do you have do you work on any solo stuff? Do you write music? 
I have written tunes here and there. Um, I haven't actually put out anything on my own as far as like, you know, professional stuff. Um, I really haven't been focusing on that recently. I've really just been kind of honing my skills on the bass and playing for a lot of different people. Uh, and it's just like I mean, this. That's, that's priority of our job anyway. Yeah, it's like that's really what's taking most of my time. And it's just I haven't really been inspired enough like to really just sit down and like come up with, you know, like if I want to write an album or something. I come up with a few, you know, cool tunes and stuff that I've I play sometimes with a trio. I play with like my best friends, uh, Dre Dops, Dre Superfly Dobson and uh, Krishan Buddy Love Darby. Like sometimes we'll play some of our tunes, you know, through that. But I haven't really just sat down and been like, OK, yeah, I'm going to do an album or something right now because. I still want to build my following, but it's just like the inspiration to put out something like that hasn't really been there yet, you know? And so I don't just want to, to put out anything. Say again? Oh, yeah, yeah. You plan to do that in the future? Okay. Oh, yeah, most definitely in the future. I can't say when, but uh, most definitely in the future, you know, especially as being a... Nobody a can say when, anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know... Uh, we can just laugh about it. Yeah. Of, you know, <laughs> instead of crying. Yeah, because I mean, you know, um, I, I want to get back to your. Uh, sorry. Uh huh. Oh no no. What were you saying? I want to get back to your uh, your gear, and you started talking oh, yeah. about uh, about your uh, your strings. So yeah. uh, we got a comment from Joe Kyle again. You know, Damian Blue Goletsky, I guess his strings are the best, most definitely. Yeah. So those are the ones that you have on your bait. Um, mm -hmm. besides those strings, uh, the gut strings, mm -hmm. so all, all, all four strings are from Damien. No, these are the, these are the sets I found that I love the most because I've had my first full set of guts were power quarters. Uh, and I, I did like them. And then right behind me, which I just took these off my K about a few weeks ago, maybe a month. I have an old vintage set of R tones that were unused, and I was using these for a while. And I actually really like these, but uh, uh, I took them off because I don't know. It's like since they're like they're so rare in a sense, I kind of want to keep them more as a souvenir, and uh, and then use the Damien's because the Damien's, for some reason, I think that the Damien's to me felt a little bit louder and a little bit slightly higher tension the way I kind of like them, so they're not too you know too loose. Um, and then also the price of them and just how well they long, how long they last. Because with these R tones I have here, they're they're still in great condition. I need to clean them, but you know they they were getting hairs and stuff and whatnot. Versus uh, the Damien's, not so much. And then on my K, I'm using uh, the new set of Power Astro Perpetuals actually. Um, oh, so this is a cool little thing. Uh, so, you know, we were, uh, I was telling you, I was at the ISB back in 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, after I placed second and all that stuff, I was, you know, touring the exhibition, uh, and just checking out all the bases and stuff. I was in base heaven there and, uh, I went and stopped by the base shop, uh, here in Greensboro. They had a booth there, base violin shop. And uh, they told me to come check out these new strings that Power Astro, they, they gave them a set to test out and put on a bass. So there's actually a video of me slapping those, those perpetuals. So uh, oh, cool. I know um, somewhere on Talk Bass, when they were talking about the strings, because, you know, with them being new release, everybody's, you know, weighing in their opinions. And somebody asked about what's their slapability. And uh, somebody posted a video oh. of me playing. I was like, oh. That's pretty cool, you know? Um, cool. I came across that. And, um, you know, I got, they, they let me check check out a set. And I've actually, I've actually been a fan of them. They work really well for me. Uh, uh, and now, I will say I do have a uh, Ava Proxy G because I don't like thin strings. And unfortunately, the Perpetual G is just a little too thin for my taste, uh, for my fingers per se. But the uh, for steel strings, I really do like these, you know? Cause they slap well for me. They bow on this bass really well, and pizzicato is like really great. So it's like I kind of found a string that's like best of all three worlds, you know. So so, Eva Pirazzi slap is so uh, but oh so so, so those are 
Okay, got it. So oh. it's not Eva Pirati, the ones that are dedicated to slap. Yeah, no, no. This one, the G string is a uh, the regular Eva Pirati Vike, uh, the with the green wrap at oh, the bottom, okay. and then uh, the other top my my low three right here are the Perpetuals, so they're like the new okay. steel rope. But I just like. You know, it has a good yeah, they sound. Killer. Um, they bow really well too. Like, you know, they bow well for me. And then, of course, they slap well because they they're like they're not like oh. too stiff. You know. Yeah, like with steel strings, there's they, they, sometimes they can they can sound a little bit too metallic. Yeah, and then it, it's good. Like it needs certain war, you know warmth. You know, sometimes you know people say like you have to play them for a month, and then after a month they sound cool. But it's 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 a little tricky. You know, like it, you have to find your own sound. So and it depends on the bass too. You know, and a player. You know, and, yeah. You know, with your hands. You know, with you, I'm sure that you would sound great on any strings. <laughs> thank you man but, you know your uh, uh, i'm glad to hear the the your choice for strings as well as far as uh pickups and amps and mm -hmm. that's what that you're using what's so your it's just I, like right now on on this k um since it's so dark sounding i used to use the the david gage copperfoot but it didn't really do it for me on this bass um like my old, one of my, my first bass I had, which was a hybrid, which had a lot more top end. It didn't have as much bottom. So like that David Gage Copperfoot worked well on that one. But this one, I have the Fishman Full Circle. I love using it. Uh, I put a Copperfoot on my on my standard back there just to have, but that's pretty much supposed to be my like all acoustic bass as much as possible. Uh, as far as amplification, I've been using a mark base i can't remember the model it's like the little the q like the 112 it's a great lightweight amp um and it sounds you know it sounds good for like the amplifier sound i get i can get a pretty good sound out of that uh i also have a tc electronic uh with a 210 cab that i like uh, and then as far as like some of the gigs where i'm like not trying to use an amp i have a couple of different mics i use so what i'm currently using which y'all can't see which is my new favorite mic is the electro voice re20 that's a good mic i'm telling you i don't know how this sounds from y'all's end but i've done some recordings uh you know like some live stream stuff and whatnot and gigs with this mic mm, it's so good and then i also have a dpa mic uh uh, with the bass clip that I use for a lot of live gigs too, especially like the swing bands. And I really do like that mic too. Um, and that's that's really it as far as the mics right now. I mean, I've used SM57s. I've even used this vocal mic and I've gotten good stuff. But the RE20, I really like this mic. Uh, it gives me a nice, warm, fat tone. And it's very clean and clear. And it picks it picks up, you know, a lot of round too. But it is a really good mic, especially for bass. Hopefully, some of these brands that you mentioned are gonna watch this video and give you an endorsement because you definitely That's true. deserve it. The other, the wow. other amp I do want to use, uh, and I, I'm eventually gonna get one, is an acoustic image because I really do like that double shot. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. when I was out at the ISB and I was uh, hanging with our friend Adam Booker, uh, he let me play his Upton Concord. And he was using a remix mic going straight into the double shot. And I was actually very impressed. So I was like, I actually want one of those for if I'm trying to play like an acoustic gig. But I just need a little mm -hmm. bit more umph without getting that amplified colored tone, you know? Yeah. So it's kind yeah, of the man. thing with upright bass. You're trying to sound as acoustic as possible, especially if you're playing jazz. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tricky. Um, I want to get back to your uh influences and 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 your influences so would you what were you what were the songs the most the list of most essential slap bass recordings uh for you what would that be okay so like uh the first one 
And uh, that would be Milt Hinton playing. <laughs> That'd be Milt Hinton playing with Branford Marsalis on that record Trio GP. Um, my professor, Steve Haynes, actually, uh, he had he was like, you know, you should transcribe some Milt Hinton one one of the uh, 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 Christmas breaks we had in university. And uh, so I chose that tune. I was like, man, I really like that because th that what Milt Hinton does on that whole song. The song is three little words, by the way. And um, what he does on that, it has like all the language you really need, like all the stuff y'all see me do on this uh, live stream today. I pretty much you can all find in that on that recording because he's doing, you know, the fast triplet. He's doing like the walking stuff. He's he's doing everything. So that's like when people ask me, you know, some things to check out. And that's one of the first videos I send uh, is, you know, it's one of the, the jazz greats. Um, then also um, Willie Dixon, the bassology. That's that's one of my other ones that I'm like really big go to because the same thing he does that same that like he's doing all those different techniques that I really like to employ when I'm playing. And uh, and the best part about that one, you can watch him doing it, too. So, you know, some people, they're really good with just listening and some people, they're better with, like visual. So and I'm kind of like a mixture of both just depends. So being able to see what he's doing is like, OK, I'm, I'm lining up what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. And I'm like, OK, that's a different way I can approach it. So those two right there are like, to me, the two most essential things for me to like, you know, I would say check out. And um, yeah, those two are definitely great. I remember uh, when I, I actually I exactly remember the point when I heard for the first time three little words. I was in a jazz camp in Germany uh, as a kid, and um, Anders Jormin was the, was the, or Jormin was a, a, a teacher. One of the guys, uh, the students, he was he was one of the bass students. He was a jazz guy, but he knew that I was into slap. And he's like, have you ever heard about Milt Hinton? Mm -hmm. I believe that I was 18 or 19, and I had never heard about him at that point. And then he's like, you should check out uh, Three Little Words. You're going to like it. Uh, yeah. From, uh, from Trio GP Records. Then I, you know, checked it out. And, was, and then I started researching, you know, like, oh, Milt Hinton did all this and this. And mm -hmm. this. Pretty amazing, it is. And as far as you, as far as your main slap bass influences, would that be Willie Dixon and Milt Hinton? Those are yes, those are the two. Because, uh, like I said, I okay. started, I, I started out, you know, I, I, I heard about Willie um, Milt Hinton as far as the slap stuff early on in my bass playing career, but I didn't actually realize who that was until uh, like a year or two later after I, I saw that video I was telling you about where he was on. Uh, talking about you know how back in the day playing um so that's that's the first and then when my blues mom uh jackie scott sent me that video of, of willie dixon doing bassology i was like oh wow you know somebody that i've known about for years um like i didn't realize you know what he was doing so those two became my two main influences because i was able to pick up so much just from them those two you know and then, of course, learning about a lot of other different people, it's, it's been cool because I'm adding more to my uh, arsenal. Of course. And uh, I forgot to ask you, actually, about that Milt Hinton video. Which video are you talking about? I don't remember the name of it. Um, I could look it up and send it to you. But is, it's, is, it, is it on YouTube or what is it? What is it? Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's, it's one of the ones where it's like, um, and I think it might have came from like some interview, like documentary or something, where it's like, because it's him oh, in his I last know. years. I, yep. And he's, you know, so you know I what I'm know. talking about. It's, yeah. it's, it's, from, it's from Chester Zardy's documentary. I'm okay. pretty sure it's from that, um, from that particular video mm -hmm. uh, that was, that was released. Like it's a movie about New Orleans uh, jazz players and it's about Chester Zardy's. And I'm pretty sure it's that it one. Probably did, is. Uh, Milt Hinton did. Yeah, Milt Hinton did a few, three main ones uh, is that one. And another one is uh, from Art of Play, uh, Ray Brown's Art of Playing Bass, where Ray Brown uh, uh, released three instructional 
VHS tapes, and mm-hmm. one of those was um, uh, Milt Hinton. So, okay, and then he talked a lot about Slack. And another yeah. one that I found out is the one that exists only in one library in New York City. And then quite a few times I went there, like just to watch that video. Wow, it's always out of the way, but it, uh, it's it's and then he it's like a two or three hour long interview. Kind of like what we're doing now, and, uh-huh. but there's there was a good section about about slab base when he was talking about you know, what the old guys were doing, how he improved the style and all of that. I wonder so if I was if, wondering if there was that was. Big. I wonder if it, if maybe it's a clip because there's only like a clip of it that I'm talking about on YouTube, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. You know, maybe after we yeah. get done here, but um. It, it's a it's a really cool clip because he's talking about that and you know he's also he's talking and playing and then at the end of it he's like okay by the time it comes like they finish the souls and it comes around he starts talking about that like oh yeah well we need something to give more umph uh you know it's time for me to think of something to take something you know he starts doing that then he starts slapping he's like maybe i because he's he mentioned pops foster and then he's like you know i, I play like the cats like pop foster used to do it back in the day i think about that and then it's like, okay, maybe it come around to me and I want to do something. And he starts doing it. And, you know, that's where he started doing, you know, milk hitting and it went crazy. And I was like, oh, that is so killed. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to find that link and, um, and then we'll talk yeah, about it and send do. that later. Yeah. Another thing that I, that I want you to do, if you don't mind, um, after we're done, if you, if, if you want to comment under the, the, the video and mention the, those people that you're playing with, so that they can, um, so that they can, uh, uh, oh, that our viewers them. can actually uh, see, yeah, see and find find out about them. Okay. So please yeah. do that. Sounds uh, good. And um, uh, what other players from now? Are there any other uh, slab bass players that you like from now nowadays that they're doing that now? Who would you mention? Um. I don't really, to be honest, with you, I don't know a lot of like like talking about it. Um, but like I said, some of my friends that are out there, like Russell Hall in New York, uh, I don't know if my man is still in here. Uh, the one I was telling you, uh, he goes by Twerk Thompson. I saw him comment a few times, but I mean, I'm amazed watching his videos. He's amazing. Uh, <laughs> like he he is a beast on you know slap bass. Um, so there's you know there's a few, and I'm still you know I'm still getting to know new people out here doing this stuff um because it's it really isn't a lot of us and it's like at least there's not a lot of us that are like out there that's like well like well known or you know you know it's like has some type of presence where like oh okay i can just go look this person up like that so i'm still figuring it out you know as far as new people but i mean and this is just more in a jazz context i don't really i don't know you know a lot of people outside of the jazz context but i do listen to uh you know a lot of different like people slapping i couldn't tell you their names but i'm like i like you know what they're doing and um yeah all those guys are great um so we're getting oh, two two hours passed by you know or, you know originally when wow. i started this you know I, I was i was shooting for 45 minutes and then it's been <laughs> like you know it never stopped at 45 minutes, like you know, an <laughs> hour, two hours, you know, something. It's it's crazy. Uh, it but, just you know, keeps getting good. It, so <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's it's our unique, you know, opportunity to to talk talk bass because you know, bass players. Milt Hinton actually said that, you know, like bass players kind of support each other, you know. And then mm-hmm. I, I read those few books from him, and what that really inspired me to do more of stuff like presenting other bass players work than you know just my own and that's cool it's uh it's a it's a kind of bass players can always have their own community yeah and i mean i'm thing. i love talking bass so and especially being able to you know talk talk with you this is this is a joy man i i thoroughly enjoy and especially the talk not only just bass but like slap bass but take it like that's really cool because you know i can talk about it with some of my friends but it's like we can't like just nerd out or just go all in all the time you know yeah so 
Same here, man. It's 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 a pleasure talking to you. Um, I want to mention to our audience, you guys are still here. So if you have any questions, this is your last opportunity. We are really close to the the end, and um, if you want to ask any questions, now's the time. And I also would like to hear where your guys are uh, listening us from. Where are you based in? So please just comment with the name of your town and a state or a country so that we know where we have uh, some listeners. Yeah. Uh, one question, my last question for you is um, what, in, you know, when we start playing music, we're so excited about it and uh, we want to, you know, rule the world and then like see the world and like all of that, all of those, you know, things that a kid thing think of. But what inspires you to still play music? What inspires you to still do what you do with as much passion as you do in this world that honestly does not have much respect for art in general so it you know we you know there's like so many things that are stopping us to 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 do to have that creative output because it's um not the most uh economically like uh, uh um, <laughs> economical thing to do and then you know somebody can say like why are you doing that you can do something else for more money but we, you just you just can't help it you know you're you that's it so I want to want to hear your take about it, and then finish this great and wonderful interview with you. With uh, what would you uh, say? What still inspires you to do what you do? Anybody that plays with me knows that I have so much fun playing. You know, music. I've always it's always been like that. So anytime I'm on the bandstand, you know, although it is work or a gig, it's not work to me. It's I'm having a good time. You know. I could be dog tired, but I'm like any day I can wake up and be a professional music musician and just have music as, you know, my livelihood and, you know, actually be you know somewhat successful with it and just keep on doing it. I'm very thankful for that. So I, and I'm, I'm always looking to make good music with uh, friends, peers, people I know, people I don't know. Um, that's that's just one of the biggest things. Like I joke around with my friends say uh, the gig itself is not the work. All the driving to the gigs, that's probably the hardest part, to be honest with you, being on the road and stuff. But as far as making the music, I'm always looking to make music and just, you know, because it's like it's my way to connect with people in a sense. So, like, when I'm on the bandstand, uh, if you know, I get to play. I play with a lot of good drummers and stuff, and I was like being able to connect with them and just like we be locked in like we're almost like one person. I love that stuff, man. And then, you know, uh especially you're playing for our audience and, you know, they see that we're having a good time on the bandstand and they have a great time. Oh man, that's priceless. So, you know, all that stuff just keeps me going. You know, it's, it's not always easy, but it's, it is, it is worth doing, you know, especially cause you know, I told you I started out as an engineer major and I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. But, uh, my heart was really in the music, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful that I, I'm walking the path that I'm walking now. So that's really that. Yeah, people, that's wonderful, man. That people don't realize, you know, how, how much, how hard it is like to be on the road and like to do all that stuff around it. And yeah. playing, we do enjoy it. And we really live for that pocket. We live for locking with the drummer. Once we, we lock it, it's like, yeah, that's magic. That's and that's but that's what's been the hardest part about this pandemic, not only just for myself, but like for all my peers, because it's like, uh, absolutely, like you know, we miss gigging because because you know, of course, that's that's income and all that stuff. But at the same time, we're hanging, we're on the band, and we're having a good time. You know, it's like that. Oh my goodness! So sometimes I like if I can go out and you know safely hang with people uh, or or jam with people, you know, in our current state. And I reiterate safely as much as possible. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't care if I'm if I if if I get some tips. I don't care if I go home spending some money on some stuff. I'm like I had a good time, you know. I live for that right now. Yeah, uh, we so. all do. Like you know, like and we have. It's. I'm glad you mentioned safety. You know, like so. Please, everybody, 
Yeah, be, please be safe know, out here. Safe, and then you know, so we can get back to normal, normal as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. so we're not stuck in this Groundhog Day, you know, like. Forever, <laughs> Oh man, like let me just read uh, these comments where we have. Um, I think you got like one question. Uh, yeah, from Simon from Hungary. He asked, "Should I get two unwound G and B strings over my medium Evas?" I'm incredibly scratching my head over this argument. What's up, Simon? We, we actually re we talk a lot on Instagram, uh, and I mean honestly, it just depends on what you you know what you're looking to do. It doesn't hurt to have it like. I love the experiment with strings, so you might find it don't work, but at the same time, you never know until you try. So I don't see why not. Check them out because you can always put your, your Avas back on. Yeah, try try every possible string that's out there and then, you know, you'll find your own your own sound. And it's, yeah, you know, what, what worked for, you know, William or for me might not work for you. So exactly. And that's an advice like for everyone. And we have T. Lee. She said, yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> All right. The mom says, that's true. You will drive five, or, five hours for more or more straight. And the first thing you do is play one of your instruments. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, another question just came out like, from okay. Dickie Scott. Uh, have you tried Underwood pickups? I actually, uh, I think I, uh, I think I have tried Underwood pickups. I think I, I think my K that I'm trying to sell, I have a 56 K. Uh, I think that's the pickup that came with it. It wasn't bad. I mean, it for me personally, I prefer one of the two pickups I mentioned, the uh, the copper foot or the um, the Fishman full circle. Uh, but it, it's like it's just like the thing with strings. It depends on the bass, you know. Some things work better for certain instruments and certain people. Uh, so, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. Me personally, I haven't found it to work as well for me as I would like, but that's me. That's a unique thing that everybody should do their own research, but we're here to tell mm -hmm. you there, you know, they can sound good with any, any instrument, any string choice, any pickup, and like they just have to find their own unique voice. And then it's, yeah. Better to sound like their own than to sound like somebody else. Exactly. I mean, if you like something that somebody else likes, that's cool. But, you know, you don't have to like that because, you know, somebody said, well, this is the way you should go, you know. Oh, yeah. There's no one way. <laughs> no. That's the beauty of life, you know. Like, exactly. Like, we as musicians understand that, you know. So I'm glad you're not engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love engineers, but they have a different state of mind. You know, so. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to mention? Um, no, or but thank you, Jorge, for, uh, and Artist Slap for having me. I, it's an honor. I had a great time. Uh, I hope the people watch it, enjoyed it. And um, thank you. Once again, thank you. Yeah, thank, th thanks a lot for being a part of Art of Slab based uh, family, and then you played like so amazing. I'm really uh, grateful you. for that. And we're going to do that slab based lesson when I come back to the States, right? S sounds good. All right. Sounds so, good. So we're going to do that in a few weeks, hopefully. And I wish you all the best. And uh, I wish to see you tour West Coast. All right. Soon. All right. Sounds soon, good. Take care. Thanks a lot. You too. All right, that's another long one, two hours and 12 minutes. But I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I did, and I, I'm sure that you uh, that you did. And I would like to just feature a few of you that wrote like where you where you're from. But before that, Zoran uh, wrote thanks on behalf of engineers. All right, we have an engineer watching us and he's been regular here he's been you know he's a weird engineer he's been watch he, i don't think he even plays music or bass but he's been you know watching us thanks a lot zoran for 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 supporting us and um what else do we have here like so we have pomona california vicky scott thank you uh, we have bersici shumadia serbia milos Thanks a lot. I think this is the first time for Milos to, to watch us. You should do that. 
more often. And we have Eduardo from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Zoran from California. Andrew from Russia. He's also regular. Darren from Arizona. Um, Simon is from Hungary. And you guys can read all the live chat uh, comments on the side. Uh, if you'd like me to feature somebody or if you have any recommendation what I should do with the Slapsville and the Slapstream from Slapsville, uh, please write down in the comments. And uh, the most important thing is to subscribe. The subscribe button should be somewhere around here. Um, and if it's not there, it's somewhere around here. I, I believe you were watching this on YouTube. And so because I have like a plenty of um, plenty of uh, uh, great players uh, scheduled for future slap streams. So there's going to be some very, very interesting episodes. And if you if you enjoyed uh, this episode with William, with Mobeta, um, make sure to share it with your friends and make sure to tell him, tell, tell them to pay attention to his great talent and his great playing uh, because he's very unique. I've been into slap for a very long time and then I can recognize when somebody has uh, some uniqueness and I'm really, I'm really glad that he, you know, he does what he does and then he's so uh, willing to share all of this, all of his knowledge and that he spent two hours with me chatting about slap. Nobody else in the world would like to do, would, would do that. <laughs> so uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I'm gonna see you next week. Um, if you'd like to support what I do, uh, please check out these few links below. I put uh, Venmo and a PayPal and the Patreon. Patreon, uh, you can get some perks. So please check it out. Um, what else? I'm supposed to mention anything else. Subscribe and all of this stuff. My links and Art of Slab Base links and Mobeta's links are all below. So make sure to follow them as well. And as you know, don't forget, never fret, slide it in smooth and keep it in a groove. This is Jorge, your friendly neighborhood bull fiddle cat. And I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.